Good morning everybody, we are looking at uh, sound propagation through regions of non-uniform temperature and uh, this is quite uh, important for studying thermoacoustic oscillations in uh, <coughs> combustion chambers and engines and so on because there is always heat addition to the gas in terms of <coughs> combustion and then the hot gases will lose heat because of heat transfer to the walls or cooling <coughs> and therefore it is very likely that the temperature distribution in the uh, combustor or the engine will be non-uniform. So uh, also the area uh, need not be constant. So due to these reasons we are uh, studying uh, sound propagation through a medium with uh, non-uniform temperature or non-uniform area. So <coughs> the just to summarize what we uh, talked about, about last class we looked at some scaling based on a high frequency approximation that would mean that the disturbances are at a much smaller length scale compared to the changes in area or changes in temperature. <coughs> so this is traditionally called the WKB approximation and then we said that uh, uh, P of x, t that is the pressure is uh, traditionally it goes like a f of x minus uh, uh, f of t minus x over c but that gets scaled by a factor of uh, a power half or square root of x. Similarly, the velocity gets scaled by <coughs> Normally it is 1 over rho c f of uh, t minus x over c but it scales by square root of x and together if you look at area times pressure times velocity which is like the power flow that would be independent of uh, x. So that is the idea. Okay. Now <coughs> we said that a similar approach can be taken even when the uh, 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 speed of sound is changing or density is changing and also area is changing. So then we uh, have to make sure that the product uh, uh, P times U times area does not depend on uh, X. So <coughs> what you do is to scale with the square root of area as we saw in the previous case, but then you have a factor of uh, square root of rho C on both pressure and velocity. And of course, when you look at the traditional expression for velocity, it goes like P over rho C, there is a factor. So uh, this rho c cancels with the two square root of rho c's. So they cancel with the one over rho c, and your uh, net power flow is conserved. Okay, intensity times area is conserved. So that is the uh, heuristic way we are thinking, uh, and uh, we then derived for a perfect gas the relation that pressure is proportional to one over square root of a and uh, one over t power one fourth, and velocity was proportional to t power one fourth and square root of a or 1 over square root of a. So uh, this is where we stopped. Oh sorry they are same actually. <coughs> I should have written this. I mean, same. Sorry about this. Any other question? So <coughs> I have some reference material on this which you can see. Uh, this is a paper written by me uh, in journal of sound and vibration and Bala Subramaniam was my student. Uh, when we did this he was a B.Tech student, he was in second year undergraduate. Uh, uh, the story is he was asking me a lot of questions which I did not know the answer to. So I told him it is all very simple, you can work it out yourself and he actually worked it out. Right now he uh, finished his PhD and is working in CSIR uh, and is making lot of things yeah very bright guy he was I think he was the first dual degree guy in the in the IIT system. Uh, so in, in this paper um, if you just see, so we talked about the uh, looking at the, um, um, sorry. we are talking about uh, looking at um, the glass I mean so the, the gas medium as slabs of gas which are each of the slab has constant property but the property varies and how it gets reflected those ideas are explained here. I can give you this paper uh, after this class and uh, <coughs> then we speak about this WKB approximation and so on that is here and uh, the de derivation in terms of uh, temperature and area they are here. Now uh, then we proceed to uh, uh, derive exact solutions for the system uh, without waving hands but actually deriving. There is another paper I have, uh, it is again my paper only, sound propagation in ducts with uh, mean temperature gradient. But here <coughs> I have worked out this problem in the harmonic domain that is we use e power i omega t and write everything in terms of complex amplitude. 
and this was something I did when I was a student. Uh, this also explains uh, the physics behind and all that quite a uh, detailed way. So, I can happily give you the PDF files after this <coughs> and uh, I have worked out some solutions and I am always of the opinion that simple solutions are uh, very helpful in understanding rather than very complicated uh, numerical stuff. I start with the governing equations. So, <coughs> we write the continuity momentum and energy equations as is described here in this equations. We have done this as an assignment uh, and if you have any difficulty in this just feel free to contact me. So, we linearize the equations <coughs> that is we write P equal to P bar plus P prime. Uh, u equal to u bar plus u prime, but then we say u bar is 0, uh, density is uh, rho bar plus rho prime <coughs> and, and, and so on and so forth. And then <coughs> we uh, work out the equations, we differentiate the equations such that uh, the cross derivative can be eliminated and then we can get wave equation and here I have written the wave equation for pressure and velocity and as you can see <coughs> this wave equations have they look different as opposed to if the uh, medium is homogeneous that is if temperature is constant, it is the same operator operating on pressure or velocity or potential or temperature, but here <coughs> you would uh, have the operator look differently. Okay. So, at this point we need to think of getting solutions, the rigorous way to do solution is there is something called Lie group theory, where there is a machinery to actually reduce a partial differential equation into a ordinary differential equations but I will not go by that, we will go by some intuitive uh, understanding. Uh, I just want to um, again tell, tell some story, uh, generally solutions are just written down by people just like that and then of course, you can show with lot of theory or intuitive um, uh, things or with lot of explanations why these solutions came about and so on and these solutions I, uh, the first solution I wrote down uh, myself without any reason and then Bala had a lot of elaborate theories on <coughs> why these are solutions and uh, and, and so on. Uh, and uh, if you actually um, read the book, there is a very interesting book in the library called uh, The Structure of Scientific Revolutions. Of course, this is not a revolution or something solving this equation, but uh, generally he has written that uh, whenever a new thing was done, people knew that it was there and then uh, I mean they just knew. Uh, so, in fact, I uh, will uh, I actually wrote this solution. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I just wrote the solution for a certain temperature profile uh, just out of the blue, and then of course we had um, to find explanation and so on. So that's the way it is. I mean, if you work on something long enough, your subconscious process things, and then suddenly you wake up in the morning with the idea, or or where you are in the middle of mound road and suddenly the solution strikes you. So, important thing is to write down uh, what is the solution because while I was uh, doing this actually I was uh, running in the stadium and I actually saw the solution in front of me uh, and I also knew the temperature profile and everything. So, I dropped everything and went home. By the time I went home I had forgotten it, but I only remembered that a temperature had a power of four third uh, that is all I could remember. So, I wrote this down and then I had uh, uh, no time to work on it, I fell sick and so on after that for some reason. So, uh, this Bala was around, he was third semester boy. So, he was always troubling me about this thing. So, I told him that four thirds should work and he, anything students ask, uh, just say that. I learned that it is very trivial if you say that they will find out the answer and tell you even if you do not know the answer. So, this is what I told him and then some days later he came and told me this elaborate theory and, and, and so on as to there is a class of solution and this four third happens to be just one of them and, and, and so on. So, the way it is written in the paper or way it teaches is not necessarily the way you do things. You just do things and then in some sense figure out and this is not uh, that is the way it is actually. When you do original things, textbooks are uh, written after everything is done. After the action is over, you write the textbook. So, the way things are given in the textbooks is uh, not uh, the way things are done. So, I think it is a good idea to read this book Structure of Scientific Revolution by Thomas Kuhn. It is a really a fascinating book, it, it talks about various discoveries, discovery of oxygen and uh, quantum mechanics and, and uh, several things and, and he explains uh, how these things were done and, and, and so on and how people actually uh, did the things. He was himself a physicist, but now he is a historian of science. Uh, so, <coughs> um, okay, that much was out of the camera I think. 
so now we will think about the solution. So, we uh, uh, said that uh, we have a characteristic d x over d t equal to c. So, we can say that d x equal to uh, d t and uh, our c is not a constant, but it is c of x. So, if you integrate this, you would get um, this uh, solution that is here and we uh, kind of say that pressure, uh, let us say we attempt to see if we can write pressure as some function of area and temperature times some other function which does not have this. So, if you can neatly separate this out, life will be solved and then if you substitute this into the uh, into the wave equation, uh, this mess is what that resulted. I mean, it is a I mean this I, I must agree that the first part is very beautiful and I am very pleased with it, but I am left with uh, a lot of other stuff and uh, we have to get rid of it uh, or we have to learn how to solve the solution and which I have no clue. So, I thought that I would uh, 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 throw this out, I cannot deal with it, throw this out, but then you may complain that how can you throw out undesirable things, you can throw out anything only thing is whether you can uh, deal with the consequences that is the thing. In life also if something is bothering you, you can just uh, get rid of it actually. If some friend is annoying you uh, and you are uh, nowadays you go to counselors and find out how to deal with the annoying friend and the books on it, how to deal with annoying friend. I mean nowadays we would have just got rid of the friend and, and not, things were simple, but then if you get rid of the guy, then the consequences will be. Uh, he may do some nasty thing too and you have to be robust to stand up to that or he may not help you uh, which you should be able to be ok. But now, uh, uh, so in our times we got rid of problems or solved problems, now you guys manage problems that is where the MBA is and all that. We, uh, we, we, we want to live with the mess and uh, deal with the mess, uh, but I am in the old school. So, this is a mess and I got rid of it and then I face the music as to what is the uh, consequence. So, first the good part. So, I will get this neat, lovely, beautiful, most beautiful equation I ever seen here, right, uh, which I know the solution like f of x minus c t x g of x plus c t and so on here even the, uh, then the uh, I have these, uh, yeah I think the c is also uh, gone because it is uh, because of the transformation here, it, it just got absorbed into the, uh, uh, I mean x became non dimensional. So. Uh, so, this is a beautiful solution, but then this solution holds good only if you throw these things. So, that is what the second statement and the third statement say. So, you have this very nice solution, but works only if these two things are 0. So, that is more like a condition which has to be satisfied to be able to get the nice and peaceful solution. It is like your friend is creating hell in your life, you want peace, so you throw him out and then you have peace. So, you to be able to him or her whatever. Uh, so, this first thing is what you want or it is not even what you want. If I knew how to solve the big thing, I would be ok with having everything. If I knew how to deal with the messy guy, then I am ok to deal with the full thing, but I do not at the moment, I am stupid. So, but I know how to solve this because I learned it from books or whatever. Uh, so, whatever I know, I will deal with it. It is like you, there is a saying that if you find a hammer, you will find nails everywhere. If you have a hammer, you will find nails everywhere, something like that. So, I know how to solve this equation. So, this is what I will see everywhere in my life. <coughs> of course, the to, to, to do that I have this penalty that this condition should be true. The first one is peaceful uh, that says that <coughs> the phi uh, will be of the form uh, square root of a t power on 4 and that seems to be reasonably ok because we saw some from somewhat physical arguments that phi should be of this form. So, I am thrilled I am jumping up and down here. We got uh, phi of the form of root a and t power on 4, because from our physical uh, insight, we we said that uh, earlier in the earlier slide, let me go back to it. So, we had this factor over here. So, it is quite uh, all right, I mean not on just all right, I am uh, really pleased that I got this factor out. Okay, so, now, uh, now the second one I am not so pleased this says that these, uh, this equation 
is the solution is the equation which the area and temperature profile should satisfy so that I can get an analytical solution. Or if only my a of x and t of x are in such a manner as to this this equation is satisfied, then I have a solution. It is like for example, you say that I can solve this equation if area is linear or if temperature is linear. It is make so it so that means there are many things possible, but for one possibility you have a solution, right? So it is it's something like so uh, I mean it is it looks more messy than that, but this is you have to have this relation to be able to solve uh, this in close form. So in the beginning I was really annoyed because I thought this was really restrictive, but later I worked out and it was not so restrictive. So for an arbitrary temperature profile, so let us say I pick the temperature profile, any temp temperature profile then the a, a of x has to be of this form and then I felt very very much at peace because you can tweak c1 and c2. So, if you have a given area profile then you can actually tweak the c1 and c2 such that you can fit the curve into this sort of profile. So, you have a given temperature which is whatever it is but for any given temperature you can actually find the area profile which will give you which will admit solutions. But you can't generally say with any general thing because you have you actually have a duct and you have to fit its values to the profile that you have. But here you have two constant to which it can be fitted, so it's uh, reasonable. And similarly, for an arbitrary area profile, you will have a, a temperature distribution of this form. Uh, I mean, it's a form. It's like uh, when you say something is linear, you still have two constant to play with, a x and b. You have y equal to a x plus b. You can play with a and b and fit any two points into a straight line, right? Uh, it, so, it is the same thing you, so you, and if you cannot actually then you can actually split it into certain segments and uh, within each segment you can fit this curve which, which looks reasonable you can fit this and see if it looks reasonable and if it does not fit it you can make the segment smaller and try to fit. Okay, so, that is the idea so it is not very bad and what is interesting is if you have constant area you get this t over t naught is 1 plus a x power 4 third. And as I told you in my story, this is what I originally started with, and it came out of the blue. Uh, really, it was given. Uh, <coughs> and uh, constant temperature. Uh, if if you have a temperature is constant, you will get area one plus a x squared. It's like a quadratic distribution for which solution exists. Now, uh, this is actually uh, a standard solution. Actually, it turns out uh, for vibration of rods, you have the same equation because when uh, longitudinal vibration of rods have same. Uh, compression and rarefaction propagating axially. So, you end up with the same kind of different equation and the solution was not there it was uh, not something new that we discovered, but this four third business is something new that we discovered. And then uh, if both are varying and you want polynomial profiles you just have to have some kind of uh, relation between this n and m. So, that uh, you can get um, uh, they have to be uh, put this way, but you can still tweak the constant. So, uh, this is what we get and uh, okay, I will pause for a minute. So, while I do all this you may wonder that uh, cannot you just solve the equations you have ordinary different equations cannot we solve them uh, with some numerical technique Runge Kutta or something yes the answer is yes, uh, but each time you solve you get a different solution each solution is different, but if you have a uh, even for a very special case if you have analytical solution you can certainly see some general pattern. Uh, so, the solution here is pressure is uh, a power half times t power one fourth in the denominator that is kind of dependence on f of uh, uh, a, this is a right running wave and this is a right left running wave instead of f of t minus x over c in, we have t minus integral d psi over c from 0 to x and that is understandable because we have this characteristic equation and uh, if c is not constant it cannot be integrated directly you have to do a kind of integral. <coughs> so, the good thing is although we did what might appear to be round about uh, algebra or something I mean earlier I was hand waving, but this factor came out of the blue. So, this kind of dependence uh, I mean now we know it is there for sure. Only thing is the velocity did not go as per my hand waving the first term was the only term that was there, but there was a there is another term which uh, is also present. So, uh, uh, 
this term the second term would not be present had we had the WKB approximation. So, if you actually uh, ensure that the disturbances are of uh, very small length scale compared to the length scale in which the area changes or temperature changes, then this term would not have significant contribution. But otherwise, uh, so the key factor I am trying to tell is that if you have a, uh, a converging area, the amplitude will go up. If you have a temperature distribution which is going up, pressure will come down, but the velocity will go up. So, that is the crux of the matter. And this, like I say, if you have a formula, it is easy to see this. I mean, if you have a numerical thing, you have to plot 10 graphs and look at them, and then, okay, I see this pattern, so it must be what, hap what is happening. So, that is a different approach. And I personally think analytical things are elegant, but it is hard to get. So, uh, I hope you got the crux of the matter and I will give you these slides and, and that original article which has much more details than whatever I am saying. So, in this exercise I did not manage to get a general solution. I only managed to get solutions, what is what is this called, this is called class of solution or class of temperature profiles and class of area profiles for which analytical solution exists. But this does not mean that there is no general solution, it could be there and if one of you can solve it, you can immediately publish it and, and uh, uh, that becomes the state of the art. <coughs> so, in the um, um, assignment, <coughs> one of the assignments, we will actually <coughs> solve this equation numerically. So, that a modern world you need numerical techniques and uh, it is very handy to be able to know them. So, we can uh, take these equations and solve, solve them and plot the area and temperature distributions and, and, and so on. Uh, but at the same time, I mean if you use your mind and can do some analysis, I think you get much better insight. And so, I am for using both analytical techniques plus numerical techniques together, I think then you will have much better understanding. So, we look at what happens to the evolution of a pulse. Let us first look at constant area case and temperature is varying. So, here uh, temperature is varying as per this profile. So, the uh, uh, temperature is increasing and the pressure amplitude is uh, dropping. I think that is what we saw from our formula when temperature increases pressure will drop. <coughs> and uh, uh, the there is another thing the, see earlier in the um, I, I think those guys they are not here today they always object to my term classical wave equation. Uh, I do not know what is the other term for it regular wave equation. If you go to McDonald's or, or this all the sewed uh, shops they will say regular extra large medium small something. Like so, I do not know, uh, I still want to call it classical. So, if you guys agree, we will veto those two guys who have not showed up and continue to refer to it as uh, classical wave equation. Anyway, in the classical wave equations, what happens is we, uh, we, we get, get a solution P prime is f of x minus c t plus g of x plus c t. Now, uh, hidden in this thing is that the shape of the wave does not change, uh, but here actually the shape of the wave is changing. It is uh, slimming down that is ok, that is a rescaling, but it is getting bulkier you see. It is not just a uh, uh, reduction in the height or, or rescaling in, in, in of the amplitude, but actually uh, this thing actually is getting bulkier. Can we see, can you physically feel why it is happening? It is hidden in this thing actually. Yeah. I think we are thinking too fancy. Uh, what happens when something is hot? What happens to wavelength for example? Wavelength increases, ah, so that is what it is. So, when you go, when the wave goes to a hotter part, its wavelength increases, so it is try to stretch. When it comes to a colder part, if you are propagating from right to left, it will shrink, okay, that is clear. But now, I mean most of you guys are from Aero, so if a a wave by itself without any change in uh, uh, medium or something temperature and so on. What happens? Let us say this is a wave and this progresses. Now, the f it, you have a compression wave at the front, let us say it is moving to the right. What, uh, what does a compression wave do, do to the gas properties? Increase temperature, increase pressure and so on. And when the uh, temperature increases, 
the part of the wave that comes behind sees a higher temperature. When temperature is increasing what happens to the propagation speed increases. So, what is coming from behind catches up catches up and, and then it will tend to form a shock. So, a normal disturbance a regular disturbance will become shock anyway. Well, now the anyway has to be qualified what is the qualification here? If it becomes a shock it will become a shock before the length scale in which the viscous dissipation acts. Okay, so, that is the thing, but if you think about if you are in a framework of Euler framework then we cannot really deal with dissipation. So, at the moment we are in the framework of Euler, so we just have to make this condition, but if you have to actually find out whether shock is formed or not you have to account for the viscous losses and heat conduction losses and, and then see if the wave forms uh, by then. But uh, I mean there are many practical examples like, like the crackers what you get here is a shock wave and I spoke about shock wave lithotripsy where you send in acoustic waves they steep and, and form a shock. And uh, if you see uh, musical instruments uh, like the brass instruments such as trombone and uh, trumpet uh, trombone uh, and, and trumpet yeah. at the uh, exit I mean they are very bright instruments the sound is very bright I mean uh, I, I do not know if this bright word makes sense to you, but it, it, it sounds very glaring right I mean they are they compared to let us say a flute or a violin. So, that is because of the, uh, uh, the the instruments are long relatively compared to other instruments and uh, and this uh, or compared to regular stringed instruments like guitar and all that uh, or, or veen. So, this wave that propagates over a distance and it actually uh, steepens to form a shock wave and people have done uh, Schlier and shadowgraph and looked at this thing and uh, shock wave and so on. Now, <coughs> what happens so, so, but this is non-linear acoustics our theory does not deal with it. So, our theory says that uh, 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 the wave can steepen, but it is in a linear framework if you reverse the trend it will go back the other way. Uh, now, let us for a uh, moment explain uh, think about what happens to a wave moving into a uh, region of increasing temperature the wavelength increases the, the wave actually relaxes it spreads out right. Uh, <coughs> now, if you are coming the other direction if you are coming towards the cold direction the uh, uh, the wavelength actually uh, the wave actually tends to steepen uh, this opposite of relax. So, if you are moving into a cold region what happens the front part of the wave will start slowing down because it sees the cold one the back part is still coming fast. So, your steepening will be um, favored and if you are moving into a uh, hot region in, in the wave is moving into a gas which is hot it will tend to elongate. So, it will it will uh, it will attempt to relax. So, then there is a balance whether the natural shock form ejection tendency versus the effort to relax because of the increased wavelength. So, I mean you can still form shock, but there is a balance between these two things. Um, if you are ok I will pass for a minute I hope you understood this is a very interesting topic and these things can be uh, quantitatively calculated at least for on dimensional case. If you are interested you can see me privately and I can give you some material. So, once again uh, gas would tend to relax if you are going to or the wave will tend to relax if you are going to a region of high temperature and if you, you tend to steepen if you are going to a region of uh, uh, low temperature. Okay. Now, if you are going to a region of decreasing area then the, uh, uh, the shock formation will be accelerated because the, the wave is tending to steepen and if you are going into a diverging area uh, there is a tendency to relax. So, again if you are talking about non-linear acoustics then it is this natural tendency to form a shock versus the tendency to relax or steepen. So, there is a balance there. Now, uh, <coughs> Of course, in um, if you look at C waves, I am not an expert on this, so I cannot uh, speak much on it. But you can there also you can see this kind of formation that the if the wave is steepening, but then it overturns the wave just breaks. But in gas dynamics, we cannot have overturning or in fluid mechanics because at every point uh, uh, you have one property that's the way uh, the <coughs> fluid mechanics structured. At every point you have one property, whereas this wave at every point you can have two or three different heights 
I mean the wave is overturning, but we do not have that possibility in gas dynamics. So, when the wave steepens, it becomes a shock, and then you have to use the shock conditions, the Rankine Huygen your gem conditions, and then continue beyond that if you want to calculate. Uh, so, now we look at the evolution of a pulse at constant temperature. Uh, of course, if there are any questions on nonlinear acoustics, I would be very happy to answer. Are there any questions? Okay. So, if the pulse is going at a constant temperature, uh, you can see there is only amplitude rescaling. So, this is a case where the area is increasing, so the amplitude uh, comes down because we saw it is like 1 over square root of area. The area is decreasing, the amplitude will go up because you are steepening, and the same trend will have happen for pressure and velocity. Whereas, for the uh, case of non uniform temperature, pressure will go one way, velocity will go the other way, but here it will be uh, similar. So, uh, we have come to some kind of conclusion about what happens to uh, sound wave uh, in a time domain kind of approach. I uh, will pause for a minute and see if you have any questions. Sir, in loudspeaker, they use uh, <coughs> cones to spread the sound. So, in that case, if area increases, uh, pressure amplitude decreases here. Yeah. So, what is happening? Uh, what is the interest of a person using a loudspeaker? Is his interest to get the sound out or to keep the sound in the duct? When you are talking about this horn type loudspeakers, right? So, uh, if your interest is it is in keeping the getting the sound out or keeping it inside the duct, getting it out. So, when you have a concentrated duct, the radiation efficiency is very poor. So, you are actually making it in, in this form. So, that actually you are changing it, its nature from planar waves to kind of radiating waves, and then uh, the radiation efficiency of these kind of geometries is much more than that of uh, uh, what is being, uh, I mean, what is being happening from a plane wave. Now, of course, if you have a kind of expanding thing, for example, if you are expanding like a cone, your pressure you can show mathematically that it pressure and velocity goes over like 1 over r, which is like 1 over square root of area. So, it does happen, but even if uh, let us consider a case where there is no duct and you are speaking and sound is propagating, you have to have a 1 over r decay because it is the same power, nothing is created or put in from anywhere. So, the same thing if more people have to take, it has to be, I mean if I have 100 rupee and give it to one person, he gets 10 rupee, but if I am giving it to 10 people, uh, sorry, if I have 100 rupee, I give it to one person, he gets 100 rupee, but if I give it to 10 people, each will get 10, if I give it to 100 people, each will get only 1. So, as the area increases, the uh, pressure and velocity has to come down, that is a question of conservation of power. So, as you said, the uh, pressure and velocity will decrease like square root of area, but there the objective is uh, not to worry about it, but to make sure that you radiate out. If you have a constant area duct, everything will, almost everything will stay inside, and if you, if you have a converging duct, uh, even more so everything will stay inside. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, Manas. Uh, when the area is uh, changing, the velocity will change. So, Absolutely. Then the, uh, it, it will steepen or it will flatten out. Yeah. Why it is not? As in the temperature case, it is Here the area is increasing, so it will uh, rescale down, so amplitude will come down, so the amplitude is coming down. Velocity of propagation? No, I think we have to. Uh, 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 so, there is two things. There is u, which is what we call particle velocity, or acoustic velocity, c, which is what we call phase speed. Or this is what is determined the propagation. I think this question came up before you started attending. So, the u actually means how much the particle is moving and that is not the speed at which the wave moves. So, just to give you an example, if uh, if you consider a line for taking a ticket in a movie theatre or something and I push the person in front and he pushes the person in front, he pushes the person in front and, and so on and so forth. Uh, eventually, uh, the push will reach the other end, end of the line and 
I am not physically moving from here to the end of the line and pushing the person in front. Uh, so, the mo movement of each of the persons that is analogous to the particle velocity, but the push itself is traveling at a speed probably much faster and that is the uh, phase speed or the uh, speed at which the pattern is moving. So, here as temperature is constant c which is the speed of the wave is constant. So, therefore, the wavelength will not increase or decrease unless the temperature changes. Now, if you have nonlinear acoustics naturally the compression wave will heat up the gas. So, the back part of the wave will see a higher temperature and, and uh, if you have a rarefaction wave it will cool down the gas and the back part of the wave uh, will see a uh, cooler gas or a, uh, uh, and it will go slowly. But in linear acoustics these effects are not there and our solutions are for linear acoustics. So, basically speed of sound is constant, but if speed of sound is varying then you will have if there is a provision to vary that is nonlinear acoustics then yes steepening can happen even in a constant area even in a variable area duct. In fact, if you decrease the area the steepening tendency will increase if you um, uh, uh, if you increase the area steepening tendency will be coming down, but then it is an interplay between the inherent tendency of a wave to steepen versus the relaxing tendency of the increasing area. For example, in a trumpet and so on the exit is diverging, but still actually a shock forms there. So, the diverging is to for radiation efficiency for the sound to come out, but uh, it still can actually uh, form a shock. Very nice question, any other question? So, the next uh, issue is to get harmonic solutions and harmonic solutions are very convenient easy to deal with. Uh, and uh, uh, the other thing is uh, many situations we put a loudspeaker on at a constant frequency in an experiment uh, and then you have one frequency and then might as well write the harmonic domain solution if, if, the, if it is convenient. So, in the absence of mean flow we had written the equations in the time domain now you substitute pressure equal to some complex amplitude times e power i omega t velocity is some complex amplitude times e power i omega t and so on and so forth. So, your momentum equations reduced so as to i omega rho bar u plus d p by d x equal to 0 and the energy equation reduces to i omega p plus gamma p bar d u over d x 0. Uh, one change from the earlier notation we had used p hat for complex amplitude here it is capital P for complex amplitude and uh, then you can get a wave equation of this form and I wish to uh, point out two differences between the traditional wave equation or the Helmholtz equation and this equation. Uh, if you look at the uh, first term it is identical d squared p by d x squared and uh, in fact, I think this dou is not needed you could have just written d squared p or d x squared. There is a middle term here which did not exist in the case of the uh, classical Helmholtz equation, uh, because there was no d t over d x, d t over d x is 0. So, this term will vanish. So, it is consistent with what we learned earlier plus omega squared over gamma r t bar earlier gamma r t I mean gamma r t bar is c squared. So, omega squared over c squared will be k squared and our solution was d squared p d x squared plus k squared uh, p equal to 0. Let me just write that down. We have So, I use classical in the sense that uh, there is no uh, temperature uh, gradient and so on. So, we can actually recover this equation um, from uh, this equation that I have written here by putting t equal to constant the first term will drop out and this uh, omega squared over gamma r t squared it is k squared only thing is it, uh, in the classical sense uh, k squared is a constant and your solution was a sin k x plus b cos k x. Now, can you guess what the solution would this be? Given that we saw that the I think Rajesh you cannot answer you know the, know the answer given that the temperature is changing and we saw that the wave goes up the amplitude goes up and we also saw that the 
the temperature increases, wavelength increases, temperature decreases, wavelength decreases. Uh, what kind of solution uh, would be uh, present? Because I just give one more hint. If you look at uh, what is the thing that Hawkeye in cricket, uh, when they when you hit the boundary, it shows how it bounces. So, if I hit a boundary, if I go by what the problems in JEE physics, this is the way the ball goes. But if anyone who played cricket would know that the ball actually goes this way, right. So, what kind of functions, uh, I mean definitely this is in school physics, reality is kind of like, like this, right. So, you have this amplitudes scale as well as the uh, distance between the minima also. Absolutely right, perfect, yeah. So, and uh, generally Bessel functions are found in cases where you have uh, cylindrical or spherical geometries. In cylindrical geometry, you must have studied conduction or something like that. In cylindrical geometries, your uh, radius is having a 1 over r kind of, uh, 1 over r square, 1 over r, it is a cylindrical or spherical. So, then you uh, have Bessel. Here, temperature is giving some such sense, okay. So, that is why it is coming, but it is still not obvious from this. So, what to do? That is the question. Uh, before this, I want to ask you, I want to take a time out, commercial break, and ask you some questions. Uh, what is the relationship between pressure and density fluctuations? Just to, just a quiz. I do not have any chocolates to give you if you answer, but I will bring some next class. Yeah, a right. What is the relation between pressure P prime and rho prime? P square, P prime is equal to? Yeah. So, we will take pole here. Is this right or is this wrong? Now, now we are having, uh, it is not constant temperature anymore. We are having varying temperature, right? Will this still hold? That is the question. So, if you have any question, huh? it will hold. So, if I had a question, I would not think, I, if I know the equation, I will jump and answer. So, can we uh, take a minute? You can solve it in a minute. Now we are having capital P, oh. but let us still put P hat when you write on the board. This is what equation is this first one? Energy equation, energy equation for the fluctuations. And let us write continuity. Yeah, what is it? So, I should say D when I go to Now, if you rewrite this equation and I can say d u bar over d x equal to minus i omega p hat over gamma p bar, substitute that here. So, minus, minus will go. So,
Now, if I simplify this, I will get rho hat equal to, uh, I can remove the i omega. So, just tell me if there is a mistake. This gamma p bar over rho bar equal to c square. Well, minus is minus one is i squared, so i squared divided by i will be i plus i over omega did you is this okay just check so i don't have uh, this p over c squared as uh, rho, uh, uh, rho hat is not p or p hat over c squared, but there is an extra term. Now, what causes this physically? Vishnu, what is the meaning of this term? So, u is correlated to density, let us say. And then what happens if you are moving into a region of higher density, then you can actually have a change in density because of this isentropic compression or whatever. Plus, there is extra change simply by transport of uh, quantity, uh, there is a transport of, uh, I mean there is a gradient in density let us say. So, the mean, uh, I mean so the fluctuation can actually transport that property and therefore, a, a, a particle which is coming uh, from a region of higher density to a region of lower density will have uh, some effect, if it is coming from a region from a lower to a higher, it will also have another effect. In fact, is not it? So, this is the uh, transport happening because fluctuations are moving things from a region with higher mean properties to lower properties. So, that will also contribute. Uh, if you write it in terms of displacement, what happens? Maybe you can see it better. Uh, displacement is, let us see. Um, right. So, uh, if you say e power i omega t, i omega psi hat equal to u, right. So, u over i omega equal to, is that right? So, so i times U or I. If I multiply top and bottom both by i, I will get minus 1 here by i omega u hat d rho bar by d x equal to p hat over c square minus this probably makes sense now. So, I think um, again we should not blindly believe that p prime over c squared is rho prime. When the temperature is mean temperature is constant, you can have something of this form. I have uh, two more questions. Why am I solving either momentum of, or in the beginning we were, we were in the first few classes we dealt with momentum equation and continuity equation. Here I actually used uh, momentum and energy. You can use momentum and continuity also. Uh, <coughs> why do I have only two equations and why am I not solving all three together? If you know the answer offhand, you can let me know. Otherwise, you can think about it and come back next class. So, stop here for today. <laughs> <laughs>